Hi parents, soon to be parents, and all guardians. Welcome back to Life with Little Ones channel. In today's video, we will talk about the common viral infection known as hand, foot, and mouth disease which frequently affects newborns and young children. In this video, we will go over a few topics such as the signs and symptoms of hand, foot, and mouth disease, how to diagnose it, how to treat it, potential consequences, and how to avoid them. If you are a healthcare professional or a parent or guardian of a young child, this video should be helpful to you. So, let's start by going over the hand, foot, and mouth symptoms. Well, the disease known as hand-to-mouth disease is rather prevalent and frequently affects small children. It is distinguished by mouth sores and rash on the hands or feet. The fact that the name hand, foot, and mouth provides you a hint as to what to watch out for is therefore pretty beneficial. However, children might also acquire other traits, so it's crucial to look out for this. This includes symptoms including a fever, a sore throat, and general feeling of unwell. Infants and toddlers experience this irritation as well as general loss of appetite. The incubation period, often known as the time between the first infection and the onset of symptoms, is typically 3 to 6 days. A sore throat, fever, and occasionally a lack of appetite are the early symptoms of hand, foot, and mouth illnesses. Painful sores in the front of the mouth or in the throat may appear two days after the fever starts and the rash on the hands, feet, and potentially the buttocks may appear one to two days later. Regarding the rash on the hands and feet, it often affects the backs of the hand in addition to the sides of the fingers. Therefore, the lesions may not be asymptomatic on the palm or back of the hands but rather more usually on the dorsum of the hands and the edges of the heels. Hence, they can be painful or the child doesn't seem to be troubled by them at all. The disease is typically mild, but if the kid has mouth sore that prevent them from drinking fluids or if their behavior worsens after a few days, you should seek a medical assistance. So, what then triggers the hand Foot and mouth disease. The Kosaki virus A16 is the virus that is most frequently responsible for hamper to mouth. Kosaki virus is primarily transferred through oral consumption and infection is spread through direct contact with sick people. They may contract the illness from respiratory droplets that are released into the air when they are infected person coughs or sneezes, nasal secretion, throat discharge, saliva fluid from blisters, or other sources. So, what actually happens during diagnosis? The majority of hand, foot, and mouth diagnoses are made clinically, meaning that a doctor or other healthcare provider merely examines the child, evaluates them, and typically makes a hand, foot, and mouth diagnosis. When compared to other illnesses that may appear relatively similar to hand, foot, and mouth, herpanghina, which is likewise caused by the Kosaki virus, causes high fever, generally feeling unwell, headaches, and those oral lesions, but crucially, it doesn't have related rash. And although there is no specific treatment for hand, foot, and mouth disease, there are signs and symptoms. The majority of treatment is supportive and most cases resolve in 7 to 10 days. Therefore, be cautious to monitor the child's other common symptoms such as their fever and pain. It is important to keep the temperature down by giving them a soft meal and basic analgesics like paracetamol or ibuprofen as well as to urge them to drink. It is important that you get medical help if the kid is having severe drinking difficulties, showing symptoms of dehydration, feeling extremely lethargic, or falling asleep. 
you might think about using a topical oral anesthetic which is frequently available over the counter and may help to lessen the discomfort from the mouth sores. Antibiotic and antiviral medication are not advised for hand, foot, and mouth disease. Some examples of medication that your pharmacist can advise you are a benzodiamine mouthwash or spray, which can be used as early as 5 years of age, and lidocaine gel, which is local anesthetic and numbs the area around the mouth. So, therefore, considering prevention is important as hand, foot, and mouth disease spreads through nurseries and school. Therefore, taking specific precautions can help lower the risk of infection. And these precautions include things like encouraging hand washing with warm, soapy water and educating kids to do so using tissues to catch germs when you cough or sneeze and throwing the tissues away as soon as you can. Avoiding the sharing of towels or household objects like cups or cutlery and washing dirty beddings or clothing on a very hot cycle. Other critical advice includes avoiding close contact with anyone who has hand, foot, and mouth disease while you are pregnant. If your kid has hand, foot, and mouth disease and it's too ill to go to daycare or school, it is important that they stay home. In the UK, returning to school or daycare as soon as the child feels well is sufficient. There is no need to hold off until the blisters have completely healed, as keeping your child home for an extended period of time is unlikely to prevent the sickness from spreading. But, as this is UK specific advice, I would encourage you to get local advice if you are watching this video from elsewhere in the world such as the US or other part of the Europe. And, I sincerely hope you found this video to be helpful and educational. If you haven't already, please remember to subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you on my next video. Thank you for watching guys and have a nice day with your little one.